All right, members of the Egyptian military largely did stand on the sidelines today as supporters or possibly employees of President Mubarak clashed with anti-Mubarak protesters in Cairo. And for more on the crisis there, we're joined live from Washington by John Alterman. He's a director of the Middle East program and the Center for Strategic or at the Center for Strategic International Studies. Uh, let me ask you, John, well, first of all, thanks for joining us. W what kind of statement does it make to the people of Egypt, to the international audience here uh, if only after supporters of President Mubarak join in these rallies does violence begin. Well, the people I spoke to in Cairo today have no question exactly who those supporters are. And then those supporters are either policemen in plain clothes or, or people who are employed by the police in Cairo. I think one of the, the very disturbing things, quite frankly, is just how much discipline we had seen among the protesters not resorting to violence and trying to keep things clean and safe and everything else. Uh, even people who aren't at all involved in the protest told me they have been terrified for a week about protecting their property, about violence, and it's just getting worse. Do you expect this then to continue? I mean, is this a sign that President Mubarak wants to drive people w with violence back to their homes and out of Liberation Square? Well, I expect it to continue, honestly, for a couple of more days. Uh, and either when the protesters have talked about having a, a large demonstration after Friday prayers, if it seems like it's petering out, I think the government has, has reasserted control. It has a tremendous effect throughout the Middle East because a protest movement will have been put down and the authoritarian leaders will feel more comfortable. If it gets bloodier, and I think it may well get bloodier, then it will be a much more uncertain situation. I think from the U.S. government perspective, there's a fear that the more violent it gets, the more polarized Egypt gets, and the more likely you are to have a radical outcome to what's happening than, than you would if you had a negotiated solution. That's why all of the U.S. government statements have okay. been appealing for common restraint. I want to throw something out at you, and this is coming from Rahim Elaf. He's an associate fellow of the Middle East and North African uh, North Africa program at London's um, Chatham House. He said, his quote is, there's no chance that Mubarak can last until September. The protests won't stop until he leaves. Do you agree? I don't agree there's no chance. I think there's probably a 30 percent chance or so. Uh, as I said, there, there's a lot of fatigue on the streets of Cairo. People are running out of food. People have run out of cash. Uh, people are feeling that this could get extremely violent. Uh, so there's some segment of people who said now is not the, the time. We've, we've, Mubarak has said he'd go and the sun is not going to come in and we've gotten enough. Other people say this is only the beginning and if we go back now there's no coming back. But does Mubarak really last until September? Do you really think that? Do you think the White House is comfortable with that or do you think the White House is behind closed doors supporting that? I don't think the White House is comfortable with it and, and every signal I've seen from the White House is about talking with the president about the need for an orderly transition, which means getting out, sending a clear sign that, that this is not going to be a continuation of the status quo after these tremendous uh, demonstrations in Cairo. What I heard in, in President Mubarak's speech last night was it is going to be the status quo. It's going to be a process run by a discredited parliament that the government sort of put in place with a, f a fraudulent election and also with uh, a vice president whose attitude toward uh, democratization is, is pretty clear to everybody who's met him, which is to say he's pretty distrustful. Well, of course, that the means intelligence more of the same. John, wh why then isn't uh, the, in, the U.S. president clear in his communication with the world about what uh, he wants? Because I haven't heard anyone who thinks that Mubarak can last until September. Why wouldn't Barack Obama then go and say, we want you to leave now. The protesters want you to leave now. And then let the, let the Egyptian army go forward with the, a peaceful transition. Well, the fact is that Mubarak represents the army. Mubarak comes out of the army. And the army seems to be siding with the president right now. In addition, you're talking about a few hundred thousand protesters, perhaps a million protesters in a country of 84 million people. There certainly are people in Egypt who support Mubarak. There are a lot of people in Egypt who say, you know what, there's an expression in Arabic, politics has its own people. I'm not getting involved. I think it is not, the U.S. government believes correctly that we can't pick what happens in Egypt. We can't pick leaders in Egypt. The, cert, the goal is, can we have a transition to a more open, politics that lead to a more resilient Egypt. I think what's interesting is that when I've spoken to senior people in the administration, they've said, you know, more open Egypt may be a less pro-U.S. Egypt, 
but that's still in our interest. They're willing to make that sacrifice. There really is a sense that the instability that this causes is what really undermines American interest, not only in Egypt, but more broadly in the Middle East. If we see, John, continued violence or escalating violence due to pro-Mubarak forces uh, in Egypt, do you think the U.S. at some point steps in and says, enough, as the Egyptian people have been saying for so long, enough, he has to go? Uh, I think that there will be more direct conversations. I understand the president has spoken twice at some, at some length with President Mubarak. I think at some point the aid does get put pretty explicitly on the table and the U.S. Uh, basically pulls back. But the fact is, even cutting the aid, that may make the U.S. feel good. I'm not really sure it changes the Egyptian calculus because the Egyptian military's calculus mm -hmm. is this is existential. And the real choice is, okay. do they back up a president or do they back up the military's role in society? Yeah, it's, it's tough decisions here. Hey, John, thank you so much. John Alterman of the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington.